Welcome everyone to another observability clinic with a focus on cloud automation. Deploy, test, evaluate, repeat the power of webhooks for DevOps platform engineers. I have Rob Jan with me. Hey Rob, how are you doing? Hey Andy, how are you? Great to see you. Yeah, great to see you too. Especially I know what cool things you're showing us. I think a big part of what we did with cloud automation is really to make sure we provide an easy way for our customers to integrate all of their DevOps tools, whether it's for deployment testing uh, or for, I don't know, notifications um, and to make sure that they can easily be integrated with cloud automation orchestrated. And I wanted you to basically give me a demo today uh, on why we're doing this and how it works. So yeah, take that's, it away. that's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited because this, you know, this area of cloud automation, it's a new uh, module that we released several months ago, and, and many customers are starting to use this. And we wanted to show kind of the full the full vision and show that this is uh, you know something that we're we're really working closely with our partners on. And you can see here, cloud automation is really encompassing, really helping dev dev ops folks as well as SRE teams really deliver software faster with higher quality and be able to remediate issues um, you know quickly, so that we reduce that mean time to resolution. And we want to leverage. You know, we want our customers to leverage all the investments that they have in a lot of great products in the industry that are, you know, ranging from testing tools to chaos testing, um, as well as, you know, collaboration and, and ticketing. So what we're what we're trying to solve and what we're seeing in our customers are, you know, just that, you know, they're trying to advance their architectures, move to progressive delivery. But as a result, you know, the underlying processes and tooling haven't haven't kept up. So as a result, we're seeing, you know, manual efforts still, um, you know, as part of every process, whether that's, you know, evaluating the quality of a release to make a decision, um, trying to test things, uh, you know, deploy things, um, as well as remediate problems. And so I, I know, Andy, you work with a lot of customers. I mean, this is, you know, something you see a lot, I, I assume. <laughs> I, uh, unfortunately, that's exactly what it is. And this is the exact problem that we want to solve. We want to help our customers to automate in a smarter way without them having to build a lot of the automation and connecting all the different tools. And I think to answer your question here, what do all of these have in common? You know, you say it, it's manual, it's time intensive, it's resource intens intensive, and uh, it doesn't allow you to leverage the benefits of these new technologies we have. Right. And so, you know, so that's really what we're excited to show you guys today. So we're going to walk through a use case, which we're just calling data driven delivery automation. And this is uh, what we call a progressive delivery where we start um, with, you know, delivering something to staging. So in some progressive uh, environments, a code commit may trigger a process or in many environments that may be driven by a ticket, um, like a JIRA ticket or some sort of change ticket to then say, hey, let's let's promote my code. And it's typically going through these types of activities, deployment, test, and then evaluating the quality. So we want to, you know, assist in making this happen and kind of do it in a, in a you know, in a unified way. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to show today, you know, how we can use and leverage uh, cloud automation module of Dynatrace to do basically a two-stage delivery from staging and then and as, as our title said, you know, a lot of you are familiar with the Dynatrace, um, you know, quality gates or taking a look at service levels. There's a lot of great videos that Andy's done in other performance clinics. So we're not going to dig into so much of all the nuances of that. But the goal is that we're going to evaluate service level indicators against an objective score to then decide, you know, to move on to the next environment. And I don't know, Andy, if you want to. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. One more point before you. Uh, is that along the way we want to be updating our tickets and notifying teams about all these activities? So this is what, really what we're trying to trying to show today. Yeah, I think the big the big point about this, and that's why I'm happy that you built this demo, is that really Dynatrace cloud automation takes care of the complete end to end orchestration. But I know you have prepared tools like Jira, JFrog, GitLab and others, that means cloud automation is able to orchestrate the end-to-end -end process, but you can still easily plug in your individual point tools where you have made an investment over the years, but we are taking care of orchestrating all of your tools along a multi-stage delivery, and we're leveraging the Dynatrace data as part of SLOs to make smart data-driven decisions as we're orchestrating that process. But that's really enough with the words, Rob. I want to see yeah. it. Show so me. let's... Uh, so get on your glasses and let's uh, let's jump to a demo. So let me get out of here and I'm gonna show you my environment. So what we're gonna do is, as, it's just as that demo. So I have, uh, so again, these are um, 
you know, just a, so a demo environment. What I'm going to do here is to show how I can create a, a ticket in, ish, in, in uh, Jira. So let's, let's, let's deploy my code. Let's just call it that. And, um, and in my, my Jira ticket, um, I, it has defaults, but here in my case, I'm deploying um, uh, for my particular project, this service for my environment. And then I want to go into the staging environment and I'm rolling out this particular image. So I'm just not gonna fill in the fields, but I'm gonna go ahead and create my, my ticket. So what, what happens here is um, the Dynatrace uh, cloud automation has a project that is, 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 is you know, installed within cloud automation and now what's happening is it's tr that ticket called the API of cloud automation and has, has begun to trigger my sequence of activities as you saw within that, within that uh, diagram. Um, so what we're, I'm just gonna switch just to show you what the, what the end result is going to be. Is so in, in cloud automation, projects are defined um, in a declarative way without all the details of what the tool is doing. And this is um, what we call the shipyard file. So what we're, we're seeing here is I have a staging environment and then our terminology is we call them sequences. So the sequence name is release and it has a series of tasks. And each of these tasks you'll see is, is how we make the integration work is we're listening for that event and then we're triggering through a webhook call uh, the downstream system to perform the work and notify back that it's completed. And so we'll, we'll see as the demo goes like all these different activities um, from the ticket is being updated to notifying my team, performing the deployment, running a test, doing the SLO evaluation, and then at the end, updating my ticket again. So uh, any, any, you want to add any, any, anything to that? No, I, I just, I just like it. Uh, it as you explained, it's the uh, separation of concerns. You're just declaring a process here. We call it a sequence of tasks. And then cloud automation is using an event driven model for every task. It sends an event and that event can then be forwarded and handled by a certain point tool. And it seems you already- yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, In my so case, I, it, it runs pretty quick for sure. So let's, let's see what, what we, let's kind of walk through each of these steps. So here um, in my notify task, um, what was happening was um, a couple of things. One, I, I have what's called uh, the webhook service configured to send this, uh, this information out to um, my Slack channel. So if I go to Slack, I have a, a dedicated Slack channel for demos. So where you can see here that cloud automation sent a notification to my Slack channel to say, hey, we've opened up um, a ticket and, um, and, you know, and then we can have a hyperlink back to that ticket that I just opened, which is this one. So I've let, let's deploy my code. And then I can also kind of have a hyperlink back to the cloud automation to this, to this specific point where it did the work. Um, then if when we do our deployment, what I was doing here was I was making a call out to one, one of our other partners, GitLab. And so as what GitLab was doing was performing our deployment. So if I get into my GitLab environment, go back to my pipelines. So yeah, two minutes ago, because I've been talking for a few minutes, but so our, our pipeline ran and inside of this job, we did our deployment. And then what, we, what we're calling notify is that the GitLab was telling cloud automation that, hey, I finished my work. So what was happening in the GitLab project, I was building up this cloud event to say, hey, my deployment finished. And that's how cloud automation knew um, that the deployment took place. Mm -hmm. um, so then if I go on to my next step, which is my testing stage, you can see here I was calling GitHub. So I have a completely different project in GitHub. So if I go to my GitHub project, which is here, and what you can see, if you're not familiar with GitHub Actions, built into um, GitHub is something called GitHub Actions. And so you can see here that this is the testing phase finished three minutes ago. So here, all I was doing was simulating simulating a test, let's just say performing a performance test. So maybe it triggered, um, you know, Load Runner, say for example, or a SaaS tool. You know, if that SaaS tool, which we're starting to partner with, with, with uh, a number of companies, that has an API that we could trigger directly, we will. But if you've wrapped it into a, a job, you can do that. And then similarly, this will send back, hey, I'm done. My test finished event is complete. And I did my work. I did my evaluation, which I think most of you are familiar with, but I'll show it real quick. So when, when an SLI uh, definition for a project is um, defined for project, it can go through and evaluate a series of, of metrics, perform, re retrieve the, 
the data directly from data Dynatrace, and then I will zoom in a bit. And then a, overall, um, I have a very low threshold, as you can see, Andy. As long as I get 20%, I'm good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, but that allows me to see I'm passed. And the integration back to Dynatrace for this is an aside, is um, it's being driven by a Dynatrace dashboard that defines all of my criteria for this application under test. So this is kind of where the criteria came from and the metrics came from, but it's driving this particular SLO. Mm -hmm. And then if we go back to the update issue, what this was doing was calling Jira to say, go ahead and update that Jira ticket. I think you might've got a spoiler a second ago, but what was happening was the a comment got added into my Jira ticket in an automated way with that result with a hyperlink back to that SLO page that I just showed you a second ago. So that really kind of ties the whole flow um, together for the staging release. So you can see now that I finished my staging, now I want to approve it to go to production. So built into my, my pipeline was an approval stage that said, I want to manually approve this. In this case, it could be configured to be automated. Let's go ahead and say, yep, ready to go. My, my SLOs are good. Um, so now it's going to continue on with the evaluation. So it's going to now, because I've defined, let's do another deployment. So let's mm -hmm. deploy it into production. Maybe we can catch this one real quick, if I can catch it, because mm -hmm. it's so quick. Um, in my pipeline job, okay, there you go. See, now it's running. So mm -hmm. my deployment is running. And uh, we can see it doing it again. It's sort of just a, a fake, faked out deployment. It's not actually doing a deployment. But we can uh, drill into the job itself, and we can see the deployment job itself is uh da, 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 da. yeah it just says you know uh running running deployment logic here uh mm -hmm. deployment result pass so it's nothing too exciting um if you want to see what that pipeline looks like just as, as as i have it here this is a um this is a pipeline job so you can see what i'm doing is i'm just doing a deployment <laughs> pretending i'm doing a deployment and then i'm moving on to construct the uh the cloud event back to um, cloud automation, and that's what completes the flow. So if I go mm -hmm. back here, I'm probably done my deployment step, and then my my job is complete. So that's pretty cool. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, the great the great thing what you've shown here is uh, you've shown Jira, you've shown GitLab, you've shown GitHub, um, and and I think you also have some JFrog in the mix in some of your demos. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. So and, and but 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 really, what I wanted to say here, the great thing is this to repeat instead of our users having to build integrations from all of these individual tools to call one after the other, Dynatrace Cloud Automation is the Uber orchestrator. And the only thing you need to then do in your individual point tools, which are great for certain jobs, like for deployment, for executing a test or doing something else, you just need to focus on a particular task and we are taking care of the orchestration, calling it, and then this tool, once it's done, calls back with the uh, with the the result. And the big point here is also with the evaluation. In your definition of what we call sequences, you can put in this evaluation sequence where we additionally evaluate SLOs to really make the decision: Are we going to move this process or sequence further, or do we need to stop it because your quality is simply not good enough? Spot on. It's great. That's exactly right. That's right. So you know, and that's and that's that's the real power of it. So we we. Um, so really the definition of what you're, you want to run is picked up by the tool. You know, and just maybe in, in closing, what we'll, what we'll say here is, um, you know, and I just have, I prepared one slide to kind of talk about it. So these are all the, the possibilities. So we definitely want to hear back from you. So I guess, you know, as you're watching this, you know, get in touch with Dynatrace, get in touch with Andy, get in touch with myself to tell us what tools you're using. So we, we really started with a, a great set of, of, of partners now to build in these different categories. So we wanna hear what tools you're using because we, we have the ability to just trigger fire and forget something as well as actively interact with that tool. So we really wanna hear those use cases. And then where, where, where we're gonna be putting all these things is on the Dynatrace hub, which is dynatrace.com forward slash hub. Um, we're, gonna, we're going to have each of these um, integrations listed with hyperlinks to documentation, um, so you'll start seeing a series of blogs as well as videos on showcasing each each of these partners. And so we're really excited about uh, what's possible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so this is great.
That's great, yeah. And to conclude with this, so what you've shown today is mainly the webhook integration, which is a great way of how we can integrate external tools. We have obviously with cloud automation, direct integration with the Dynatrace in terms of the, uh, the evaluations uh, of the SLIs and SLOs. And there's going to be more integration options coming up in the future. Most important is this is a great showcase now of the multi-stage delivery automation, as you called it. But Rob, I know we're doing another set of videos where we talk about automated remediation or problem remediation. And there will be another video out there that you can check on YouTube uh, on how the webhooks actually work in more detailed, like how we can configure them, how we can subscribe it. Because remember, Rob has shown you the process definition, what we call it the shipyard, and it's separation of concerns, process, cloud automation sends events, and then you can subscribe to events. And uh, this is the nice loosely couple like you will do in normal software engineering, loosely coupling uh, your components to in the end to an end-to-end -end business use case. Rob, with this, I want to say thank you so much for the first one. And I'll yeah, see that's you. great. Yeah, thank you, Andy. So yeah, we're much more to come. And yeah, please uh, subscribe to the Dynatrace channel and uh, as well as the performance clinic uh, specifically uh, where we're going to showcase more and more. So thank you, Andy. And uh, uh, we'll see, see you on the later. next video. Yeah, bye-bye.